in this problem involving inverse trigonometric functions, we have been asked to find out all solutions for the equation sin inverse of the modulus of sin x is equal to square root of sin inverse of modulus of sin x. So again this is this can be considered as a function uh, equation involving composition of functions. So whenever such kind of an equation is given forget about the how difficult the function is just take one thing so here for example we can take sin inverse of mod sin x to be equal to y then this entire equation basically reduces to y equals root 5. So that is the first step to be done. So let y equals we are taking it as sin inverse of sin x then the equation reduces to y equals root y for which we know the solutions are y equals 0 or y equals 1. So now we have reduced it to basically looking at these two cases. So y equal to 0. So when is this possible? So y equal 0 implies, so let us first look at y equal to 0 that is sin inverse of mod sin x becomes equal to 0 which can be written as sin inverse of 0 itself. So when we have sin inverse of this is equal to sin inverse of another we can basically equate these two terms. So which implies that the magnitude of sin x is equal to 0. Alright. So when does this happen? This happens when we know that so sin x itself is equal to 0 which implies x is equal to any multiple of pi. So this is why what I was mentioning right in the beginning that is try to make a substitution and first of all get some values then for each of these values you can put the given equation and get the values for x. So the rest the other case which is possible is when y is equal to 1. So here again we will do the same thing that is we are looking at sin inverse of sin x. So when this becomes equal to 1. Now can we write it 1 as sin inverse of something? Yes definitely we can. We can write it as sin inverse of, so I can write it as sin inverse of sin 1 itself. Why am I able to write it as sin inverse of sin 1? Because sin 1 is, so this is possible because 1 is lying in the principal domain of sin inverse that is minus pi by 2 less than so this is a which is a principal domain of sin inverse that is the reason why I am able to write it as sin inverse of sin theta is equal to theta. I am making use of that property to write this part of the function here. So once I am able to write this kind of a thing that then I can equate the two things here that is the magnitude of sin x and sin 1. So this immediately gives us the magnitude of sin x is equal to sin 1 and hence what can one say? We can say that this it gives us that sin x is equal to plus or minus sin 1, right? So what does this imply? This implies that x is actually equal to, so once we have this thing that sin theta is equal to sin alpha, we know that theta can be written as alpha plus minus 1 raised to power n and pi and so on. But since there is both plus and minus involved here, if you reduce it, ultimately what you will get is x is equal to n pi plus or minus 1. So the if you consider all the solutions of this equation, so you have x is equal to n pi, x is equal to n pi plus 1 and x is equal to n pi minus 1. So it's actually a straightforward problem provided you make the necessary substitutions and do the calculations carefully.